back like those dinosaurs, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Red Canids versus Chaos Latin Gamers. Finally, friendly, here we are. I mean, it's honestly gonna break it down real quick. As uh, we told you a little bit earlier, uh, unfortunately, the first game, due to some infrastructure issues, we had to remake. So we're just going to get live right to it right now. Same picks, same bands, different outcome. Let's take a look how it's going to go. Red Canids, uh, they've got Ori Troll on the Sun Wukong, who is a very strong player. Uh, but really, the story has been about XTT. XTT on this round, I mean, it, it was first picked, uh, yeah. and this is something we have to talk about. Uh, unfortunately, the players had to remake this game because of the infra uh, infrastructure issues at DreamHack, no. But XTT went off, and this is someone that Chaos the Latin Gamers are going to have to watch out for. And this is actually really interesting. So we saw the Soul Ban, and then after the Soul Ban, the immediate snap first picked Rom on XT. So Zaylon on the other side, his two best hunters are Soul and Rom. So with the Soul Ban, out the snap pick onto Rom first. That's not only to take it away from Zaylon, but also to say, hey, I can play Rom too, and I'm gonna do it better. And, and he did it phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal job. And honestly, one of the biggest problems we saw from Red Canids, even though they were so dominant, was Marcel's. It took him a little bit to get rolling, a little bit to get comfortable. There was a lot of timing issues with the Scylla Ultimates. But once he hit the first one, we just saw a snowball effect where he got so much more comfortable. The question is, is he going to have those same issues, or is he going to come out swinging this time? Well, we'll take a look here. Everything getting underway. The buffs have been farmed, and we're heading to lane. Marcel's on that purple pot Scylla. Here he is. Should have no problem uh, clearing the wave as soon as his jungler shows up. And the goddess on Numeritos, definitely something that these guys are here. You know, I was talking to Red Canids a little bit uh, as this one went on, and they said, hey, look, we're very confident. Uh, things happened, but we're certainly ready to go ahead and give it another go. So I expect Red Canids to be very aggressive. And it looked like Fireman's or Skull could have been in trouble there. XTT, though, quick backflip. Gonna make sure the Bacchus initiation not gonna connect, and that's what we saw, you know, a little bit earlier, where this Bacchus likes to go aggressive, likes to poke out stuff. Even if he can't guarantee the kill, at least force Fireman to skull and XTT back, or to burn their potions early. So here, the jungler is gonna meet up with the mid lane, and separating the mid and the jungle. This is really quick. good. You saw that aggressive push towards the side, and that didn't let allow Numeritos to come in very quickly. And, uh, you know, this Guan Yu versus Sun Wukong matchup, it's going to be pretty slow-paced. Uh, I think it's going to go the exact same way we saw last time, where neither of these players are really going to be able to get an edge. It's just going to be a farm fest and really all about the rotations. Now, neither, I think, had a, a massive advantage or really outplayed the other, but or, uh, Ori Troll doing such a phenomenal job of locking down Numeritos in most of these fights. We even saw him solo him in that mid lane at one point, so something that uh, KLG is going to have to take care of. And the solo is exactly what Ori Troll needs to do. He's going to use the stun interrupt that Tala with Salt and try to use his own power to go ahead and clear the lane a little bit better than Beltway. And then eventually Sun Wukong pokes, 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 and then finds a kill. I mean, that's all he does, right? And this Blue Stone pendant is perfect for him. He's able to hit not only in the entire wave, but sometimes he's going to be able to get Beltway as well yep. if he's not positioned properly and just whittle away at those potions. You can see both about equal right now, but uh, a slight advantage actually in favor of the Guan Yu. Yeah, of course. And that's the problem here is Ori Troll, uh, this Sun Wukong, definitely a poke oriented god. And Beltway Way, well, we can heal up that poke, no problem. So a little bit of pushback and uh, plus and minus here in the Scylla lane. This one should go back and forth like a seesaw. And now you can see the Scylla, a wheelish combo. Incredibly deadly last time once Marcel's kind of uh, got a little bit more comfortable. K, uh, K Bolia uh, kind of targeted out. We saw the Fitter not really be used to full effect. I think there was uh, a fair number of mistakes, a lot of missed timings on the jumps, thinking he could get away with stuff that obviously he uh, couldn't and got abused for it. So I think that's something he's going to be a little bit more wary of, probably looking to play a slower paced game from the Fenrir. For sure. I definitely think that's going to be in the in the cars and Marcel's and Dango Sao making their moves over to the right side. Less for a gank and more for these uh, fire elementals. It's a lot of gold if you get every single rotation of those, so definitely want to pay a lot of attention to it. And uh, looks like Firemancer Skull here has rotated in, level five. He was uh, pretty big a part of Red Candid's game plan. They really like him to uh, force these initiations, look for fights. A lot of times, picking off Numeritos and uh, uh, Xylon in the back, that's, that seemed to be really his target. He didn't focus on Beltway or ever even uh, Daylon. It was really about taking care of those squishies. Now, obviously, it's, it can be useful to knock up the support, 
uh, and keep them out of the fight. But instead, right. his focus was on, he trusts his team to follow up on any kill he's looking for. Yeah, he's just looking to be that aggressive Kumba Karna. Uh, Fireman's skill, of course, has a number of tools as well to, to peel for his teammates. But with a god like Rom, a god like Scylla, uh, Red Kittens have a lot of tools to really get out of jail by themselves. So they don't always need the jailbreak from the Kumba. About four minutes in here and uh, farm game going a little bit towards the Canids, the Brazilian team. They're at about 400 gold in the lead, and uh, that's just off kind of this early pressure. It's the Kumba, a Wheelix, and the Silla. Really deadly 3v3 core that I don't think the Giannis is going to be able to match up to. It's really a question about the Bacchus, right? And the Bacchus can get going. Sometimes you can burst players, but unfortunately, they don't have the guaranteed mage burst, right? Like a Scylla, like a uh, Raw or a Ryzen, where you're going to get those hits off the knockup. And of course, that's the second step, right? Capitalizing off of the knockup. The problem is with this Wheelish, that knockup just might not come. Bacchus will jump, and then the pull for the Wheelish ultimate will kind of just and, neutralize. And we saw that a ton on the Bacchus. Honestly, really fast reaction times coming out of Dengosa. Anytime the Bacchus tries, Tried to initiate, just completely counter initiated, and then we saw his carries just get dove in the back line. So Ori some... Troll getting poked out just a little bit. He's gonna head back to base, actually. Oh, that's uh, bad. No teleport available, so he's gonna have to hoof it all the way back to lane, and that's gonna give Chaos some good pressure in the short side. He's actually elected to stay in the lane. He does have his ultimate, but he's low on mana. Has the blue buff ticking away here, but I think he's gonna play it safe and back off, you know. He will give up a little bit of pressure, not something he really wanted to do, but it has about 100 gold lead, so this should make this lane even by the time he comes back. Coxilla doing what she can. Marcel's here gonna get back and buy his first item. Uh, I'm curious to see if he'll go boots. boots. And it uh, will be boots. It's always safe to go boots, especially yep. as a mid laner. Even though you have Sentinel, just the mobility from Finn. I mean, he's gonna be able to jump on you, stun you, and get okay. that ult off before anything really happens. Nico Sal says hi, but Numeritos dodges out the bowling ball real quick, so no big hit coming out from the jungler. The 3v3 group up is strong. Scylla on her way back, and it should just be the core versus the core. Mid Harpies nowhere near spawning, so Chaos just might be looking for a fight. What I'm looking at right now are these wards. I mean, take a look at the inventory of Red Canids on the left-hand side of your map. Sentries on two players, including the mid, and uh, at least normal wards on every single other player. So vision is something that they're really going to heavily focus on. And you can see on the map right now, most of the wards have fallen off, so they have a slight advantage. And it's something that KLG is going to have to be careful of. They only have a sentry and a single regular ward in their inventory. Unless they start backing soon, they're going to uh, leave themselves open to ganks. Maybe all is here. Looked like he wanted to maybe make a jump for it, but... Dengo walks right on out. Go He'll head it, over to the left hand Just side go of the jungle. For it. Ooh, Marcel's and Dengosa around here, but I believe KLG know about it. They did walk right over a ward underneath that Gold Fury and just quickly gonna go farm their back camps. And now Kanids placing the aggressive vision. You see the ward just placed on the enemy red buff. Look for Kanids to make the invade over there. On they the wanna red force buff. it. They definitely wanna force it right now. They have yep. the Awelix and the guaranteed combo between Firemancer Skull and Marcel's. It's really about having that opportunity. They don't want to dive too deep, and KLG's done a really phenomenal job of positioning themselves in spots where they're not going to just get immediately bursted, or it's going to force Red Canids to get out of position to try and make that play. Warrior Troll here has really not just... Uh, neither of our soul laners have really... Uh, ventured out of the lane so far. A little nah. bit early in this game, but sometimes we see those early rotations. A couple teleports used from each of them as well. They're both working on the breastplate, but there has been a lot of poke in this lane. 2,000 damage coming out from each of them in only seven minutes. You can see their te teleports are down, and they haven't even finished breastplate yet, so both trying to get as much of an edge as they can. Fireman's Skull taking a little bit of poke as his opponents oh, here we go. pick up the mid heartbeats. Now Beltway in some trouble. He's Dango flutter steps, and not too much. Talo Assault is going to push the enemy back, 1v2. Fireman's just going out by himself, knocks up one, now he's in trouble. Oh, the uh, I'm a monster is on the mark, and here comes XTT trying to find a hit, but he's not going to be able to make it one more hit. And Maritos picks up first blood, Apollo comes down as well, and XTT could be in trouble. There's the Intoxicate, see you later, XT. Two down, Chaos gets credit, and that's one for Apollo. Zero death still on Red Canid, so first blood goes the way. Of L KLG. And, and that was a really good job by Chaos Latin Gamers. Recognize, oh no, Apollo oh. getting plucked out of that red buff, but I think the Awilish really wanted that Bacchus. Definitely did, but Chaos goes ahead and they uh, now have two players with the red buff on, so a little bit of a power play. The Bacchus with red buff is very interesting, especially As since Magi. he's got the Magi boot, so that's going to hurt for a while. 102 power right now, as well as the penetration coming out from the boot. That's 10. That's a lot of damage. I mean, uh, Shoes of the Magi Bacchus already does a ton of damage. Yeah. I mean, you saw the burst he put on the XTT. I mean, 
belly flop into Intoxicate was probably 35, 40% of his life, and he had no hope. There wasn't even, need, it wasn't even needed for anyone else to help finish off the kill. And that's really, that, that's what Bacchus brings. If he's not bringing the uh, damage, he doesn't really bring much else outside of the belly flop. And you say outside of the belly flop, but it's certainly one of and the best And then a stun, scenes. and then intoxicate, and the then protection. From... The stun is tough. Uh, the it's stun not, is that's tough. fair. It's the pretty easy. It's pretty easy to juke out, to be fair. <laughs> juke out, cancel, walk away from, just look at funny. Laugh. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's, Bacchus, the stun, it's more, uh, it's a gift more think, than that. Think if, you know, there was the Athena taunt, but it just was bad. That's Bacchus. <laughs> but to be fair, he has so much CC. Like, exactly. It's not, that's not a fair comparison. And now, KLG, up two kills, level 10 on this Bacchus. It's pretty deadly. You can see the belly flop is maxed out. That's going to start doing a significant amount of damage. And Daylon, he wants to jump on someone. You could tell that he's looking to force the initiation. Marcel's is going to split off from his team, and there it goes. Double bounce is going to be strong, and Kmiola cleans up one. There's three kills in total. Zaylon gets one for four. And up goes the support. Oh, Can't find uh, it. All five group up, teleport from the I, solo, and there goes gold. I thought that was Ori Troll at first. He was going to teleport into the middle of three players, but instead, it is going to be Gold Fury started up. Marcel's around the corner, and XTT is just kind of tanking this, taking to this guy, looking to steal it away, but KLG already picks up the Gold Fury, and now they've got about a 3K lead. And this is a strong look for Chaos uh, with a early objective here as 10 minutes approaching on the clock. We'll see Fire Giant spawn. No team's really going to think about it just yet, no. but Gold Fury is certainly not available for them either. So really, if we see teams capitalize off of, it, off of a strong team fight, I think we're looking for the invades in the enemy jungles. And now XTT down by about seven to 800 gold. This is pretty massive for him. I mean, his snipes are on point, but just a little bit slow to steal the gold. And just across the board, everyone's starting to fall behind, even in the solo lane. You do have a, a Ori Troll, kind of the only one ahead, and that is the the good, the best part right now about Redkinids. And not only that, he's level tw he's level 13 now, but level 12 is the important part because that means he gets to buy his second relic, and his second relic is be going to be Curse. So Beltway uh, on this healer is not going to be in a position to really do what he wants whenever Ori Troll decides to pop that. Curse. You know, I, I I like Curse in a lot of situations. However, the the problem is there's no meditation he's countering. There's also a sprint on the other side picked up by Daylon. So, I mean, the second that curse is out, the sprint is going to be popped. And, and that's on the box as well. He needs to be able to hold that in and recognize that. A little bit of misplay there. Ori Troll trying to get that up. That tiger form instead of the ox form to get stunned out the Talo Assault. Yeah, I know. Talo Assault could be not immune, but certainly not, not immune. So, just a little bit of oopsie days there coming out with Ori Troll. But he'll go he clear up the wave real quick. We visit our 3v3 in the mid lane one more time. And uh, speed buff here was secured by Degosa, but it doesn't look like there's any objectives across the map right now. And this is really good for Chaos Latin gamers right now. They definitely don't, they didn't have the, the stronger 3v3. However, uh, heading into uh, the 12th minute here, it seems like their XP advantage might be able to carry them through this. Uh, Marcel, still level 11, has not hit level 12 yet. And that's when he's going to be able to get that second relic. That's going to be pretty close. XT now has already picked his up. Both hunters will up for the Fury and the Sank. Strong options, defensive options coming out from really both hunters here. Uh, Chaos Light Gamers, uh, their hunter is Zaylon Snake, whereas Red Canadian XT. These guys have been both pretty strong. XT showed himself a little Banana. bit earlier, but today, or right now rather, uh, Zaylon Six, quite a different story. 2 0 and 2 at the moment. I mean, I don't think he really has done an immense amount or so much better than XTT. He simply just had the advantage of being Apollo. He's been able to rotate to these team fights, specifically in the mid lane, and pick up two kills. I think one was on to Fire Mantle, Mancer, and I think the second was on to uh, Diego So um, early on in the engagement. And having that slight lead over the ROM is uh, going to be pretty important for him. You can see not only has he finished his Zik file, but he's already working on his uh, chin size as well. Yeah, it's at 700 gold right there. A lot, a lot of power on the side of Apollo at the moment. As we're 12 and a half in here, folks, Chaos leading by about four. Four kills in total, about 3,000 gold. Uh, but there's the important mid lane ward that I, that I always love to talk about. Having this ward in the mid just gives so much information. I mean, the biggest thing isn't, you know, about whether someone's in the mid lane, it's about when someone's not in the mid lane exactly. there. Because most of the time, mages will just sit there in the middle. They'll just, like, sit there and farm. And what they do, actually, is they'll rotate either to the left-hand side of the harpies or the right-hand side of the harpies to stay out of direct vision. And you're going to be able to notice, if you're the team that placed that ward, which side they went to, which gives you an opportunity to gank the other lane or be prepared for rotation. Not for nothing. It also shows you just who's crossing the street. You see the jungler walk by, where, which side is going to be at, so able to know. I, I, the biggest thing about this war, too, is 
kind of the gold efficiency because it's not worth it for Red Canids to counter that ward right. in mid. They waste 150 gold there, as well as it not giving them any information. You're just trying to deny information from KLG, and you have to make use of that by actually rotating if you do so. And, and now you got to take more clever routes around. So the, this ward really uh, has done a lot. And we've seen multiple teams really grab onto it over the course of the last couple of years. Ori Troll, that way, still give it a go. Ori Troll with a little bit of an experience lead on his opposition. And, you know, Sun Wukong just being able to do a good amount of elimination. New Marito's going to get one right there. And Daylon going to get the second. So two kills. For Chaos, it's 6-0, to zero and we're 14 in. And it looks like they just executed kind of this pickoff composition once again, similar to Eager. Uh, K. Viola just goes in, and the double globals come out. Apollo not even needed to use, uh, didn't even need to use, excuse me, across the sky for that rotation. It was simply Numeritos just point blank finding the ultimate and doing enough damage. Now a tier 2 being aggressed on as well. And there's what we're talking about. Pocket jumps in and gets pulled on down by a wheelish. Up goes the Hunter, looking for some more as Dango plays it safe. XT doesn't get anything off, but here comes Ori from the back. Shell is popped. That's a good thing for Red Canids as they force Chaos to use one of their defensive relics and save that tier two tower, but just barely. If that tier two tower fell, or honestly, if KLG could picked up, could have picked up two kills, this game might have snowballed incredibly out of their hands. Thankfully, though, they were able to escape, and a, and a good job by Beltway. He actually went aggressive, trying to get some damage off, and could have continued to go on Dangosa. I don't know if he would have been able to pick up the kill. Probably not, but instead recognizes his team is dying in the back, so he switches his direction, goes immediately, heals for them, heals them up. Red Kid is going to start the gold period now. Half HP already is the objective, and Chaos going to make their rotation from mid all the way over the gold, but with that Scylla ultimate clean and clear, it's gone. Red Kidans wind up looking at Chaos, taking the Gold Fury away from them. 2,500 gold in the lead is the Latin American team that was already. A, that was a really intelligent play coming out from Cadiz, and they needed to. They recognized that Chaos Latin Gamers had already burned all their ultimates, they had burned all their abilities, and they had got poked out in the mid, wasted the shell as well, and that they weren't going to be looking to farm or stay back in lane. They had all back to unison, which left the gold three open, free to take. You know who is going to stay in lane? Zaylon Six. Stays up in their lane, pushes up forward, takes out the tier one tower all by his lonesome. So Chaos do get a little bit more on top of the gold fury that they just get and he's gonna well be able played. to back i think uh, over 1400 in hand able to finish off those chin size so a massive power spike that xtt isn't going to be able to match just yet also a level behind and i think i think this apollo is pretty close to 17 so almost two levels ahead very very tough stuff for apollo right now it should be interesting to see how he transitions uh, into the real late game as we're sort of approaching the mid game right now i'd say kevin 16 minutes. It's kind of about feeling, right? It's kind exactly. of like a gold tier has been taken, maybe two, usually just one, though. And it's just like, all right, now the 4v4 team fights are coming. Now the 5v5 team fights are coming in. This is probably about mid game, right? Two items on both players working on their third. Yeah, I got the solo laners uh, working on their fourth. So, yeah. Bellway now. Here and just looking at Ori Troll. Not too much anything of consequence. The soul laner is just going to go ahead and pick up their own buffs for now. Blue buff around both of their waists. And then Gosal is going to join up on the right side. Neither team really looking for the engagement here. You know that the Wheelers wants it, but no way that Beltway is going to go ahead and let it happen. This might be more Dingo style. Uh, just looking to get some farm over in this soul lane. He knows Ori Troll is fine. Level 17 has a slight experience advantage. Let's oh, share that up. But big rotation from KLG. I mean, this is one of the biggest rotations. Four people are in this lane all of a sudden. Ori Troll is going to avoid the stun by using purification. Well played. And right up there into the ultimate. He, he, he baited out Ragnarok there. Just trying to... He could have... Uh, probably walked away or very or ulted incredibly early. Instead, he wants to try and get something for his ultimate. He just waits for the right time. Capiola looking for the kill, can't find it. So the ultimate used by the Sun Cop should be a good move right here. But Chaos now pushing up on the right hand side. You can see Apollo lurking over there, sort of by the mid lane. He's gonna pop the ultimate. Looks like Chaos wanted to create engage. There's the ultimate coming out of Guan Yu. Up goes one, down he comes. Dumarito in some trouble, but the turnaround looks strong. Chaos gonna get in some trouble as Scylla is chased out by the Apollo. Zaylon lands all the way deep, but can't find the kill. And now he's surrounded by the wrong team. He's gonna get knocked up, and here comes the Giannis. 
finds Marcel in the back line, and you can see it's the Kumakarna to fall as well. That's going to be two kills for KLG, a double kill for Zion, and three on the board. And that was a massive misplay coming out from Kanids there. They were not only down a player, but also the rotation from Marcel was slow, and XTT was split pushing. They should not have been able to defend that. They should have backed off, and they were punished for it. Dash forward coming out from Apollo. You can see just exactly what's going on there as XT takes the sky to avoid the damage from the Wolf. Looking for the shots, can only find two. And Ceylon forced out on the hard way. Looking for the follow-up as XT going very deep into it. That's Can't trading. find any of the shots. Ori Troll gets it, but XT's gonna trade his life. Down he goes, thanks to Beltway. Thankfully, though, it looks like the Phoenix is going to hold, and a really good job coming out from XTT. Finds so many autos in that fight. Even though he can't find the last hit on Apollo, Ori Troll was in there as well. And for now, Red Canids get their first kill on the board. Still down about 5,000 gold, though. Very important kill right there. You know, 5,000 gold certainly is in the death sentence, uh, especially when you have some of the tools available to you. And once you pick up that first initial kill, uh, we saw it with the Chinese squad, yes. where it can just sort of snowball, not necessarily because of the nature of the game, but because of the nature of the players. Once you know, hey, the enemy can bleed. It's been 19 minutes that we've been smoked out, but we finally get a kill. We can keep pushing, guys. Let's go for it. Sometimes you're in a situation where even though you're, you're super far behind, the other team will play a little bit sloppy, stay a little bit too long in the lane. And honestly, the last time these teams faced off just before the break, uh, it was kind of the same thing where Red Canids had a lead and they got a little bit too aggressive and allowed KLG to come back into it. This is something that uh, KLG is going to have to be careful of. They need to make sure that they slowly gain, you know, more and more objective control. Gold Fury is going to be spawning. I want them to focus on that. Especially because of the composition that Red Canids have available to them. I mean, Scylla, one of the best late game characters in monstrous. the game. Uh, that uh, monster is good choice of words because the ultimate just allows her to literally waterfall throughout the rest of the team. Uh, just come, it just keeps going. It wants to play like a storm deck where you hit one, you hit two, you hit three. All of a sudden, nobody's alive because the Scylla taunting you and you got no phoenixes. Uh, honestly, I view a Scylla as one of the, the strongest comeback gods in the game because yeah. if you can hold out, if you can get full build, all you need is one ultimate. You need one ultimate where you kill a carry and you reset. You don't even have to kill another person you've already done the damage in the team fight and you just need to swing away again if you can do you know that i'm a monster damage to one maybe even two more people even if it's not a third reset i, I mean you could just snowball a fight out of control or your troll making the rotation from the solo lane and marino's got to exit out and zaylon gonna exit in there's the shell pop by red kinnit Fireman's a skull, some trouble. There's a beautiful knockup coming out from Ori Troll. XT grabs him, and there's trouble for the big man. But Fireman's skull gonna walk out. He get put down the hard way, but the yawn stops him. Ori Troll doesn't get stopped as Zaylon falls down. And oh, the root. Still locking it down. Bacchus Roll forward dead. by XT, can't find the turnaround, but finds the last hit eventually, and Daylon falls. Red Canids are actually being able to turn this fight right now. There goes the feather step. And you can see XTT focused it on Numeritos nice. in the back line. Hits the cripple, no portal available. One more yeah. shot, and he finds the second kill in the team fight. And now KB Ola, he's 1v3, trying to get the last hit. Brutalized will secure it, but Canids fight back, find four. The accuracy from XT right there allowed his team to pick up important kills. Tango style dies, but it's all well and good because everybody else outside of Beltway takes a spill. And look at Chaos right there. I want you to look at the right side as Beltway jumps on in, does the best trick tag impersonation, but he's going to be chased out. No gold fury for him. Every single relic on cooldowns for Chaos. I mean, they burned everything, and at least Beltway there, able to stop the gold he fury. Stopped it Very important play. You know, 1v4, I think uh, Canids were a little bit worried there. They have fought themselves back in a little bit. They're only 3,000 gold down now instead of the 5,000. As long as they make sure KLG doesn't get gold fury when they respawn, they're in a really good spot. 22 minutes in, and full credit, we talked about the Scylla already, hitting multi-man multi crushes three times throughout that fight. And that's really what this one is about. When you're down 5,000 gold, you can't sit there and go, all right, team, how do we get five grand real quick? You gotta, how do we get 1,000? How do we get 2,000? We do that two, three times, all of a sudden, bang, it's a tie. So now Chaos, 11 to five. The kills are certainly different, but 3K separation this late in the game, KK, not that big of a deal if I'm Red Canids. Oh. KLG starting up the gold. They were just trying to sneak it. Yeah. Okay. They had the vision on the gold fury. Firemancer Skull, though, recognizing something might be going yeah. on. And Dan Ghost up finds new Marinos in the mid lane. Looks like a, a nice pickoff coming out from him. Yeah, fun stuff coming out there. You can see the ultimate on cooldown. So I'm um, going to venture a guess and say, Giannis walked through the XTT, wall. Man. And Dango pulled him all the way out. Teleport coming in from the Red Kinnitz. So Baited. Ori Troll going to join the party as well. You can just see the baits coming up from XTT. Doesn't actually want to start this, just wants to be able to force the fight. I think he's finally elected to pull it fully. 
and he is taking it out. Taking a decent amount of damage. No life steal coming out from this ROM. And Daylon's coming in. 25% HP. This is good. Belly flop is strong. There's the intoxicate. Red Kid to do secure it. XD looking for blood as KBOLA gets it himself. Dengo down. There's the grab onto the hunter. Daylon lands on the backside, missing, but he's looking for someone else. Oh, Marcel. Marcel's couple hits. So beautiful, so god. Marcel's gonna take a spill. Dancing forward is XT. Beltway wants to follow him. Stun is good, but the meditation is stronger as well. Daylon gets credit for that one. Dancing through. Fireman's skull is toast. Warrior Troll exit stage down, and the Tier 2 tower falls. Just well executed from KLG. Red Canids secure the Gold Fury, but the, the problem was that they stayed around to fight too long. Dengosa ended up trading the Gold Fury out away from XTT, got so low. The second Daylon goes yep. in, even though he doesn't steal it, he does the damage necessary to pick off the jungler. And then one at a time, Red Canids just kind of file in and, and try and they almost it's unfortunate because they actually all fell trying to protect one another. Ori Troll does what he can, but really can just watch as Chaos tears across his team's entire map. No structures remain for Red Canids as Chaos have an entire menagerie of towers across their lanes. Fire Giant now the subject of Chaos's ire. Half HP on the objective already as Ori Troll shows up, tries to do what he can, but Wellway drops the ultimate. KLG secure the Fire Giant. And that was a little bit of a misplay from Ori Troll there. Jimorito's just going to be able to get out here. Dingosa had respawned, but. Fire Giant in a hand. KLG looking good in this game. 7,000 in the lead. And actually, it doesn't even look like they want to back. They want to protect this tier one on right. But with three players, it's not going to be the easiest thing. Umarito's here by himself. He needs to be careful. Yeah, Red Canids had a horse in this race a little while ago. And as it stands, the longer the game goes, Red Canids will look stronger and stronger. Again, we talked about Marcel's, but the ROM as well. ROM, one of the best, one of the better late game hunters. Yes. Uh, he just becomes so incredibly strong with all the items. Uh, as it gets later and later. Early in mid game, it's really about the ultimate from him. It does yeah. so much damage. And to be fair, even even at level 20, it does a significant amount of damage. But late game, he has his uh, ability, his his self steroid, going to be able to increase his attack speed. And I mean that that swings. I mean that's such a massive boost to your DPS. If you could find the autos and you get RNG lucky with your crits, I mean no one's going to be able to stay alive. And we saw it before. Ext uh, yeah. Xt was hitting those basics. We saw six out of seven, seven out of seven, over and over again. And that's why he's sitting number two on the player damage, and you got to count. The 5k that the soul lanes up, that's poked between two oh, solo yeah. lanes. No, that, <laughs> Ori Troll's just throwing out <laughs> Jingo Bang on cooldown. He's like, yeah, take it. Take my blue stone ticks. And then Guan Yu goes, heal, 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 heal my blue stone ticks. <laughs> Not that really big of a deal. It just goes back and forth. So now Sprint. Chaos is going to jump forward to the mid lane. Aggression onto the Phoenix, and now Fireman's just go looking for the big mess. This defense set is exactly what Red Kid is need. Now way to the back line, and here comes the Intoxicated. Good amount of damage, but XPT, he's in a good spot. Kabiola taking someone to the back line. Fireman's are skull, but that's the squishy. New Marino takes that one. Two for one shot. Marcel's out of nowhere. Marcel's out of nowhere. Three kills, four kills. He needs one more. He's Marcel's looking for it. does not have the distance, but he takes two out in one shot with the follow-up for three, the follow-up for four, and Marcel's single-handedly brings his team back into it. XTT to the sky. Got to find the two shots off the mark. Third shot going to miss as well. Numerito's on this Giannis. Just trying to play ring around the Rosie, but a quadra coming up from Marcel's. Red Canids defend their Phoenix. Really well played by him, and honestly, the entire team perfectly defended. That's the defense set that you dream of. You say, hey man, they're coming down, they're up 10K, 7K, but maybe, maybe still gets a quadra kill with the ult. It actually just we happened. Kind of, we kind of joke about it sometimes. It's <laughs> like, yeah, you know, Scylla, one of the best gods from behind, finds the one kill yeah. and then just gets the reset. You, you don't actually think it's gonna happen. When you're this far behind and now tier one being aggressed onto, good sanctuary coming out from XTT. And one it looks like Ori Troll just gonna zone. Yeah, tier one tower, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. XT looking for the tier two as well. 500 in the pocket for Red Canids. They're still trailing by about 4K, but they certainly have the wind in their sails after that play, Kevin. I mean, it's one thing to talk about gold. It's one thing to talk about kills, but that momentum, you can't put a quantification on it, but it's certainly here, and it's certainly a part of it. Apollo in the sky, not gonna come down though, a little bit worried about the 1v4. Probably doesn't want to die too early. And now Red Canids, they're just going to be backing, spinning the gold they've earned. You can see Wind Damien almost completed from XTT. And I mean, uh, even though Scylla got all four kills, you saw XTT, just his positioning in oh, these yeah. team fights is absolutely perfect. Well, I mean, don't forget, Scylla only gets reset if she nails the kill. And the reason people were in kill, re reason in kill region was because XT was just piling those arrows through three targets.
And now, it looks like it's going to be really hard for Kanej. You can still nu see Numerito still with Fire Giant around, around his waist. It's going to be falling off in about 20 seconds. Speed buff stolen away, but XTT doesn't want it to end. Not quite. There's a portal out for Giannis, giving an exit if Chaos need it. They're still up 5k, but Red Kanej know that they can fight now. And as the game gets later and later, cold's going to start mattering a little bit less. That blue buff, though, still definitely a part of it. Cool down, a big deal. Fire Giant. 55 seconds away. KLG able to get the last one here, but I mean, Red Canids, I mean, they fought back. I mean, honestly, the gold, they haven't been too far behind. They've been able to stay relatively even here, but it's their Scylla, level 20. Their ROM, level 20. Their team fight potential is massive right now. The only worrying spot for them is probably Fire Mancer Skull. You can see he's only level 14. We're nearly 30 minutes into the game, and he has been picked on. The Bacchus, five levels above him. Fire Mancer Skull, 0, 06 and 4, not tanky enough. You know, the Bacchus is five levels above his direct opposition, and we, we know what Bacchus is looking for. He's looking for the jump, he's looking for the intoxicate, uh, uh, and he's looking to re the souls. That's I, what it's about. <laughs> Did he have that last fight as well? Not I, quite. I, I don't recall, but I mean, this Bacchus is doing a whole lot of damage. You can see he's working on what I think is probably going to be Spirit's Robe here. Zion 6 over on the left-hand side, going to be able to solo off this gold here. No one's going to be rotating over anytime soon. Doesn't have life steal though. If someone had walked over, could have been a little dangerous for him, but he's going to pick it up. And now KLG find themselves about 6,000 ahead. No one's full build just yet. Solo laners are incredibly close, so that lead is pretty significant. The biggest problem here for Red Canids, I think, is the Awelish right now. Uh, sitting on the bottom of the player damage is just not where you want your Awelish to be. Uh, even even if Awelish was doing a little bit more util utility stuff, like pulling the Bacchus out, we've only seen it once. So really, we need to see Dengo Sal pick it up uh, if Red Canids want to be a little bit more vocal in this late game. You know, I'm looking at Firemancer Skull, honestly. And, and don't get me wrong, right? He's a support, so it's not always about the damage. But he is a Kumba Karna. And what we saw them so successful uh, about earlier, Red Canids, that is, was this Firemancer Skull setup. Yeah. This time, he's been getting himself out of position and getting caught and paying for it. Kaviola doing a really good job of focusing him out. Yeah, the six deaths right now on the Kumba Karna. Still going to look for these setups. And as I said, Red Canids did have the momentum a little bit, but Chaos did exactly what they needed to do. All right, so you guys killed us all, <laughs> and you've got a tier one tower. Good job, guys. Chaos have just stalled the game out. They've allowed that momentum to sort of dissipate. And now everybody that had Red Canids on their mind, it's just Chaos's game. Ladies and gentlemen, they're still up 6,000 gold. They're starting the Fire Giant by themselves. They're looking for a fight. Ori Troll from behind, actually clearing the wave. A little bit surprising, Fire Giant Getting pressured here, but KLG don't want to get it in kill range just yet. They want to force the fight here, but they've been forced off of it. And Ori Troll from behind, trouble for Numeritos. He's going to get the stun onto the Giannis, who immediately finds a way out. So that ultimate on cooldown now. Rom going to find some shots as well. This is good poke. Follow takes to the sky. I mean, Kanids have kind of forced KLG out. KB Olu looking for XTT. He's their hard carry. It's Zilla right. going to be able to combo that. There he goes. One shot, but it's not enough damage. And XTT locked down in the back line. And now Fireman's Skull doing everything he can to peel Ori Troll up in the air as well. Marcel's alt down. Still has the damage of Zilla, though. But it doesn't look like anything else is going to be breaking out. Yeah, Ori Troll going to go ahead and get credit for the Hunter. Marcel's going to get smoked out by the dog. K. Biola gets credit for that one. And now Ori Troll just can't find much more. Dango Sal gets the exit on the left side. The rest of the team on the right. And Marcel's an EXT on the hard way. I, I mean, I uh, praised EX, uh, XTT's positioning uh, in that middle lane defense, but that yep. time he goes, he dashes aggressively. He was trying to get a kill. And the second KLG recognized that happened, they all collapse on him. You could see just both of his relics burned at the same time. The second that uh, Sanctuary ends, they just dive in. He's the one who's been doing a significant amount of damage outside of the Sun Wukong. Yeah, Sun Wukong has been uh, a lot of the damage, but also Ori Troll keeps finding these, these flanks around the backside. Now, he got the stun. I'm not sure he's looking for the stun, honestly, Kevin. I think so. On Numeritos, he was. He wanted to do as much damage to the Giannis as possible, even if he can't get the kill, force him out of the fight. And he forced the ultimate, too, which yes. not only is it going to do a lot of damage, but also it provides an exit for a lot of players. The angle that he forced Giannis to use the ultimate, that's not a relevant ultimate. This no. is not going to be useful. I, I mean, no one could get in or out of the fight in the position it was at. Yep. I'd like to see healing, though, because what happened was we, uh, the fight was kind of going on, but no one was really getting damaged. And then all that happened was Beltway just was spamming Conviction, healing everyone up. You could see 25,000 player healing, wow. more than anyone has done damage in the game. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. 25,000 healing. 
the, the problem was Canids, they, they engaged, but they didn't full commit. They kind of played a little bit back. They focused on, I think, Daylon, who's incredibly tanky. And then just Beltway's like, well, I'm just going to heal everyone. And Beltway's got one of my favorite Guan Yu items. This Genji's Garb is, is going to allow him to get those cooldowns up even more than Guan Yu already does. And now with Chaos starting the Fire Giant, 25% already. Fireman's just go against the Yawn, but the jump going to be over the top. There's some ultimates. Chaos Live game is secure. And Fireman's just skull trades his life for it. Daylon gonna fall. Marcel gets credit for that one. Ori Troll finds a knock on to Zaylon, and the chase is on. Red can do not have a fire giant, but they want to fight over it. And Daco makes the wrong choice. New Marino with the double kill, but Marcel answers back with one of his own. Two alive for Red Kinids, three alive for Chaos, and the retreat from Marcel's looks like it's gonna be successful. Great. 180 roof. Or Rai Troll, though, I'm gonna run into two players and just kinda tanking them. Gonna See Oxform ya. away, and he should be able to live, but uh, that's probably one of the best things you can get if you're Canids, right? They gave up Fire Giant, but they were able to take at least two players off yep. of it. New Maritos and Xylon 6 still have it, though, so a little bit worrying. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, Nick. no, Marcel. Marcel should be fine. A big dive from Chaos, but that's the problem, Kevin. Yes, two. Yeah. Is be two dead is better than no dead. But those are <laughs> not the guys you want without it. That's Zaylon true. with a fire giant buff as a hunter, your mid laner, and your healing solo laner. Those are the three that you would choose to have the fire giant. Probably. <laughs> I mean, probably. It's, it's unfortunate. At least they got a draw. little bit, though. Um, something interesting, though. Taking a look at Numerito's build, he just finished Spear of Desolation, but the item before that was uh, Breastplate of Valor. Yeah. And I kind of like this choice, right? Because he gets the he gets the 20% CDR, so he's going to be able to spam his, spam his abilities faster. But also, the problem he's been having is actually Ori Troll just focusing him out in the back line, both in the earlier game and in this one. We see him just always trying to find the Tigers on and poke him out. This is going to help him survive that. Yeah, I actually really love the Breastplate of Valor. Uh, Giannis is a character that Shory does a lot of damage, so that's why we see some of the big 100-plus power items on him. But, but the Breastplate of Valor, I mean, just the CDR, we constantly see Giannis want to go to the CDR and, hey, Ori, you're going to stare at me every single time? <laughs> I'm just going to buy the breastplate and just sort of walk away. And now, looks like uh, grouping from KLG, Fire Giant, still uh, down for three more minutes. So the, the three players remaining with it have it for two more minutes, and it looks like Phoenix's are the next thing they want. They're I splitting up the map. And I love this style of push. We see this from a number of teams uh, where you'll see four players in one lane and then a character that's very adept at pushing a tower by itself, whether it be a hunter, an assassin, or otherwise, will go ahead and wind up in a different lane. This spreads the defense out, and then when Chaos really want to make a push, they'll either push both ways or, as we see here, group up as five and make the enemy expend some of the abilities and then push. Look at Daylon here for this fight. He's probably going to be the one looking to engage. And, XT. and KLG, just go to the left-hand side. And XTT, right? If you're a Canids fan, that's who you want to focus on. Him and Marcells, they're the ones that mounted this defense under the same Phoenix just about five to ten minutes ago. And here we go. If you're a Canids fan, up. you want to focus on XT. And if you're on Chaos Team, Firemancer you want to team. focus on XT. Firemans are down 25% already. XT taking a little bit of poke, but this is about himself as well. Chaos. Not Firemancer is so yet. low. He, he needs to almost get back to the fountain, and the team, I think, has to concede this Phoenix because he's going to be focused out. He does have a sleepy time passive, which means KLG will have to focus him when he's knocked down. New Marito's caught by himself over on the right-hand side and forced to ult. Hey, what a surprise. Ori Troll targeted the mage. That's what the breastplate of Alice for, and Giannis gets out of there, no problem. Phoenix does it. Mid lane goes down. Chaos credit on top of the Phoenix. And now everybody shading over to the right-hand side. Firemancer still low. I he think that was the up. opportunity. He, he should have healed up now, and this is going to be trouble for him. He's actually in the back line for the team, knocked up as well. Intoxicate is good. Doesn't even have a sleepy time pass. If Marcel's in the ult, trying to fight someone, does a good amount of damage, but it's a not enough to kill. XTT looking for Beautiful. the snipe, but just shy of the kill. Soul Reaver. Wonderful play by the Bacchus to go ahead and create some space. Winds up getting a kill for his team, and now some more. Good to miss on XT as the dodge roll is a strong one, but everybody else now focusing. Brutalize hits three times before New Marino takes him down. 25 kills in total. Order Titan half HP, and Chaos gonna wind up on top of this one. 37 14 on the clock, and Chaos up a single game to none. KLG looking uh, really good in that match, and honestly, 
Firemancer stall got focused out. We saw it in the Eager vs. HFM game where it was mana-like this time. These players, they don't go into the purification against the Fidir, and the team just focused them out. And he got so far behind, to be fair. It was really hard in that end game because he needed to get the farm, but KLG just kept forcing the fights and not allowing him to get that. Yeah, it was really tough for Kanins to even get back in there. We saw a flash. We saw a flash of moment in the mid game uh, where we might have seen the, re the, the comeback from Brazil, but Latin America just came out up on top, not letting the foot, they, we saw that, they, they sort of leaned back a little bit, and then after that, unable to let the foot off the gas, and really the moment that we saw that come around was really just Marcel's. And this was just perfectly executed. He throws out the, the crutch there just to get the slow if they want to engage, and then sits on the back line perfectly. He just signals away in case he gets in trouble, and I think he hits a, a multi-man root on this one. Yeah, look, look at this. Look at XT just raining the arrows through everybody, bringing everybody down low, lowering the kill threshold. Boom, there goes two. Marcel's repositions, gets the third, while K. Biola's aggressing on his teammate, gets the fourth on top of that. And what that allowed Red Kinnitz to do, honestly, not that much. And full credit to Numeritos. He actually stays alive in that fight and teleports himself around multiple times. Right. And you saw what Red Canids were doing. They were trying to like chase him around the map and lock him down, but it was a Giannis. He just went back to base, finally was able to defend the tier two in mid as well. And that was kind of KLG's spot to get some objectives. Exactly. They just weren't able to do so because the Giannis stayed alive. Exactly. Red Canids wound up on top. They got the fantastic highlight play. Awesome. Keep that Jiffy Cat because you're not getting the win. Uh, KLG just wound up smoking him out. And really, that uh, what else can you ask for? You get the four, you get the four kill. You can't find the fifth, but you get the, t you get the tier one. You got to be looking for the larger objective. So the lack of objective focus coming out from Red Canids, I think, was the disaster. And, and I think then late game, we saw the, the second fight of the fire, or maybe it was the third fight of the fire giant, where uh, Ori Troll comes around from behind, finds the stun, yep. forces out the Yon Assault. But the problem was the team didn't full commit. They were a little bit scared. They were a little bit wary of going in. And when they finally pulled the trigger, they went on the Bacchus. XTT rolls in, gets targeted out. He burns his relics immediately. And just they wait a couple seconds. They jump and pile on him. And Beltway the whole time is just healing up. The focus should have been on the carries, and they should have just gone all in. They couldn't allow the, the teams to kind of like reset, regroup, and heal up. One of the big things for KLG, you noted it uh, in passing, was the Bacchus. You, you noted that uh, Red Canids were focusing on the Bacchus, but the problem was that for uh, for Red Canids, Bacchus had that Soul Reaver, and he was able to really wreck what the opposition wanted to do. And just one single belly flop, what happened was, instead of this, this sort of setup composition, you just had to delete this composition where they just looked at a guy and said, hey, look, that guy's going to die. Bacchus jumps on top, and he's got 10 HP left anyway because you just Bacchus him with the Soul Reaver. And then the follow-up from that allowed the team to go ahead and find fight 5v4 so many times. And we saw his opponent across the way, Firemancer Skull. Uh, I mean, the first time we saw him played phenomenally, but this time... Um Still trying to force things, even though he was behind, and he, yeah. and he really paid for it. We saw him miss his ult uh, a couple times there, especially at the mid camps, and that's really what allowed KLG to get their lead. Is the second his ult is down or his dash is down, they just jumped on him. Obviously, he could pop his uh, his mesmerize, but. The, the team, the rest of the team wasn't really able to follow up off that. Yeah, just a little bit of a non-factor there. And XT on the ROM really didn't show the type of game that I think you wanted to see. Uh, again, taking it away from Zaylon. Basically, Zaylon is really known in his region for Soul and for ROM. The Soul's banned out, and the first pick ROM, that's I'm about to play it a little bit better.